Okay, so I, I can't believe it, but the 2023 NFL season is, is over. But don't worry, I got a lot more content planned around this past season, so there's gonna be more, but I feel like I just, I owe you this video, right? I didn't do a wild card recap, I didn't do a championship recap or a Super Bowl one, so might as well go through the entire playoffs and look back at what we've already seen. And, um, uh, maybe if all goes, all goes well, I won't, I won't break anything else. This is all your fault, Packers. This is because of you. <laughs> Wild card weekend started out with Browns versus Texans. Honestly, my most anticipated matchup of the entire slate of games. Future first ballot Hall of Famer and global sex icon Joe Flacco versus for some rookie? I mean, it, it, how can this game not be amazing? And after many people elegantly and k kindly pointed out over on TikTok, I was wrong in choosing the Browns to win this game, okay? But in, in my defense, all right, in my defense, I firmly believe, I am confident that in some timeline, there, there is a multiverse out there where if the Browns didn't just become a walking cremation factory and if, you know, Harvey Weinstein continued his good play after his last good performance against the Ravens, then the Browns could have at the very least made the Super Bowl. I know, I know, calm down, but seriously, they had all the pieces there, but um... The holy scriptures uh, strictly prevent any dopamine usage for Browns fans past the bar f***ing minimum. So instead, they were forced to watch as the best defense in the entire NFL got spread out and violated by C.J. Stroud in the offense of Houston. And yeah, you can't just pin this on injuries either. I mean, Miles My Garrett despawned, they couldn't tackle, and honestly, Jeremiah owusu karamoa was the only guy who seemed like he even moderately cared out there. It was baffling. All week long, the biggest question with Cleveland was could Joe Flacco really be a playoff quarterback in 2024? But all those dumb f***s who actually questioned Joseph's ability were immediately proved wrong early on. But the main issue just turned out to be almost everything else. And eventually, though, Joe Flacco did start making a few bad mistakes. But turns out, if you don't protect your 67-year-old artifact, you will not succeed. All negativity aside, though, the Houston Texans won a playoff game. And all you gotta do is a little gaslighting, Houston fans, and... Tell yourself that Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins are just CJ Stroud and Nico Collins. Except, you know, maybe these two new guys are just better. And um, if you do that uh, good enough, you might be able to fool yourself into thinking the last four years just never happened. But unfortunately, uh, for your future hopes, Lamar Jackson exists. So, yeah. <laughs> See those uh, you see those comments I was throwing up on the screen there I'm I'm not trying to call anyone out all right I'm not just doing it to be a dick but uh, just, just, I just find it absolutely fascinating that Cowboys fans believe that something will change M maybe that's how they have to function maybe you have to just live in delusion I mean I've done that before as a Raiders fan but I feel like I've grown past that uh, Although I, I did pick the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl, but that, that's besides the point, all right? What matters is they f did it again. And if this isn't the year where they're going to take the mold and fracture it from their past failures, tell me, when is that going to happen? When will this franchise play up to their talent level? Mike McCarthy's fat ass sure isn't going to help do that, so... All I'm asking, Dallas, is to just give me one reason to believe that next year this exact same thing won't happen again. But I just don't see that reason. It's not there. And a Green Bay led by Jordan Love and one of the worst defenses in the entire regular season ruined it all again for Dallas. So to recap what we've learned in class today, well, the Dallas Cowboys are still the Dallas Cowboys, and will always be the Dallas Cowboys until Jerry and his eternal curse are finally extinguished forever. Oh. Time for the Freezer Bowl 2.3. This was a game that scoreboard-wise was probably not as close as it actually was. I mean, 26 to 7 isn't close, but it actually was just so much more one-sided than that. I feel like this actually could have been a 40-point blowout from the Chiefs if their offense was... 
Uh, I, I guess good, but it, you, you know, they're not. But what we did learn was that the Chiefs defense is actually just that good. Outside of one play, Tyree Kill couldn't even f breathe, and Tua still can't beat the fraud allegations, and if it's already not clear to every single one of you out there, listen to me. Listen closely, all right? I don't want to hear a single one of you ever say that Tua is better than Justin Herbert. Never again. That narrative needs to be dead and buried. But the argument is going to be something, something, uh, whether Cole there, uh, Chris Jones and his package were all reasons why Tua struggled, but there's no excuses in the playoffs, dude. And the Dolphins fell to Kansas City just like they did during the regular season, and still... Still, <laughs> can you believe this? Listen to the stat, all right? Since 2003, the Miami Dolphins have never won a single playoff game. Not even one. And surely they're the only team to do that, right? I mean, there's there's no way any other team would... I don't... There's, there's no need to look that stat up. It's just... It's just the Dolphins. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God. I, I love me a good storyline, I'll, I'll tell you what. There's there's nothing better. Last year, we had Burrow versus Mahomes in the rematch. Uh, two years ago, I guess we had the Bills versus Chiefs classic, and three years ago, Breeze versus Brady, and so on and so forth. And it's just, it's a staple of playoff football to get these narratives. And like I said on the Lions video I made, which you should totally watch after this if you haven't already, of course, Matthew Stafford had to be the last barricade to knock down for Detroit to break their curse, and... The, the game was just a great time, to be honest with you. The Lions were firmly in control of it in the first half, doing literally nothing wrong on offense, and played well on defense, but Matthew Stafford is really, really good. And Puka Nakua just also made some crazy plays throughout the battle, and right when it looked like the Lions were pulling away, Stafford just refused to die every single time. However, Matthew Stafford probably knew deep down before the game, as the sacrifice of the Bobby Lane curse himself... He had to be the one to die for the Lions' resurrection to take place. And in the end, the Detroit Lions won a playoff game. They actually got it done. And for me, honestly, the biggest takeaway from this game was the Lions' just ability to keep their discipline going. They kept the consistency up all game long, and if they could keep that up, honestly, I think they're just going to be unbeatable. <laughs> oh yeah, this is... <laughs> This game actually happened. I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I almost forgot to go over this game. I almost just didn't record it. The Pittsburgh Steelers of 2023 making the playoffs might go down as one of the most forgettable playoff teams ever, and this game really reflected that. Mason Rudolph is still the most average, mediocre quarterback throughout all of time, and despite scaring the Bills for like 13 seconds after the Calvin Austin touchdown, unfortunately for them, Josh Allen is good at football and just ended the game four minutes later. No need to fear, though, Steelers fans. Do, do not worry. You, <laughs> Arthur Smith is here to save the day, so re rejoice as Kenny Pickett's development will f multiply from here on out, surely, in just the preseason alone by simply being around that mustache and uh, puracy gonna be great. Can't wait to watch that offense function next year. I'm going in. I'm tired of fucking losing, dude. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of being a bitch. I'm tired of being a sorry, sad-ass motherfucking organization. So, I, I thought about doing that whole montage bit that I just did with the Packers, you know, where I go through all the horrible plays from this game, but why? <laughs> Well, why should I? The better team won this game. There's no surprise here. The Eagles season basically ended after their loss versus the 49ers or the Seahawks, really just take your pick, and the holes just kept leaking more and more by the week until eventually the fluid just ran out. The Buccaneers just happened to be the team that took advantage of their monumental collapse, but really any team probably would have won this game. I would have money on the Panthers on this one, honestly. Like the Bills game though, this matchup also wasn't really ever a competition, but what was so shocking to me was just the lack of chemistry between the players. Everyone on Philly's side, coaches included, just seemed like they were all on the wrong page, and every single guy looked visibly upset with the next dude. In other words, Philadelphia football was played, and and they ended up leaving in the first round, honestly just grateful that they even got into the tournament in the first place. It's just, th this team was almost undefeated at one point. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's f***ing ridiculous how this season ended. So, I already recapped the divisional round in another video, but I'll still share some of my, uh, more... <laughs> 
extended thoughts here for shits and giggles. The second half of this game is why everyone believed in the Ravens at one point. Not only was this their best chance since 2019 to win a Super Bowl, but with all the looming contract issues, there seemed to be just a sense of urgency coming from the squad, and that showed when Lamar and company just all over Houston when they needed to. I don't think any sound-minded individual actually believed the Texans could win this game, but honestly, if that first half kept up, it, it actually could have happened. But the Ravens just have too much talent, and Lamar Jackson did the thing and whatnot, and Houston would be eliminated from the playoffs after the game. But as probably the happiest eliminated playoff team in a while, and God, I would just, I would do some unforgivable things to have CJ Stroud. <laughs> As I said in the intro, my trusted water bottle hasn't been the same since this game, and if you watched it live, I, I don't need to say anything else, you already know why. But let me go into it anyways. The San Francisco 49ers, on paper, at the very least, were a top two most talented team in the league, and versus the youngest team in the NFL, a team whose wide receiver won was Romeo Dobbs, or I don't know, Christian Watson with a f peg leg and a Joe Barry led defense were struggling mightily. And as I think I've learned now, Brock Purdy is good, obviously, but he's really missing that it factor. The argument could be made that this is all Shanahan's fault for putting a leash on him, but it just seems like he goes with the flow a little too often. And pairing that along with not great weather conditions, small hands, and really bad throws, and it looked like Brock Purdy was about to throw the game in the first half for San Francisco. Uh, but luckily for them, though, uh, they have talent. Uh, Christian McCaffrey runs fast, and Jordan Love harnessed the spirit of Brett Favre to lose the game, and I really don't feel like going over everything that happened before that. I just... Let me just say it again, okay? As I play everything that went wrong, I just... I feel like the Packers really missed some massive opportunities here. Not just talking about the field goal miss or any singular play, but just the game as a whole. The team is still very young, though, so they should have more chances, but remember, this is the NFL playoffs. No matter how good or bad you are, in just one game, anything can happen. And the facts remain that this 2023 Packers team, the youngest team in the NFL, won the same amount of playoff games as Aaron Rodgers' last three Packers teams did. And a chance at an NFC Championship game versus a team you beat earlier this year cannot just be brushed aside. But I'm probably just being too negative again, and Matt LaFleur outcoached Kyle Shanahan, so you have that. And as long as you keep developing the players, maybe it'll go better than this. Action, God throwing in. Yet another game that falls into that Texans vs. Ravens, Bills vs. Steelers category thing. It kind of felt like the Lions were going to take care of business the whole time, especially at home, but something in the back of your brain had you thinking, yeah, that'll probably happen, but, but what if it doesn't? What if Cam Sutton continues to be a first-team all-Taiwanese star and Baker Mayfield starts doing positive things? And uh, we actually came uh, really close to delving into that darkest timeline. Mike Evans is really good, but instead, the Lions hype train just kept going with Ben Johnson piloting the Jared Goff model almost perfectly, and Derek Barnes icing the game with an interception is a level of happiness Lions fans haven't gotten to experience in a long, long time, so keep it up. One more win in the NFC Championship, and then you can achieve true bliss. <laughs> and they've done it again. Is, is anyone actually even surprised, though? Like, did we actually think the Bills were going to win? I mean, th this was just not even a very good Chiefs team, but it didn't matter. Yes, the Bills are so injured from top to bottom, the GM was probably rolled in on a gurney, but like I said, when it's playoff time, all the cards get slammed down on the table, and you play with what you have. And in a game like this, although Mahomes isn't going to make many mistakes, the rest of his ass receivers will. And when Mecole Hardman fumbled right after that whole wild sequence before, it really felt like, you know, maybe the Bills actually had a chance to change fate for themselves. But no, it's just inevitable, I guess. I don't know, there, there's just a select few franchises that can never escape their past, and when Tyler Bass missed a game-changing field goal slightly towards the, the um, direction of the fine gentleman here, it was over. It really was. The, the Bills squandered chance after chance after chance in this game, and f***ing lost. Even though this Chiefs team was so vulnerable, they just blew it. And even after all that whining about the overtime rules, wanting to play the Chiefs again, and in your own backyard, you still lost. What a f***ing embarrassment. However, 
Before we go any further, I gotta talk to you about this video sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. If you've been around this channel for a hot minute, you already know what I'm about to say, but Underdog Fantasy, if you're somehow not familiar, is the easiest way to play fantasy sports, in my opinion, and my personal favorite way to do that is through the pick'em game format, where all you do is choose whether you think a player will go higher or lower on a singular stat, and depending on how many you get right, you can win up to 20 times your initial money. And although the NFL season is over, uh, I, I guess we could still bet on NFL players, because for this upcoming All-Star game later today, uh, CJ Stroud is playing, so I thought, you know, might as well throw a bet on him, and Benedict Matherin also should be able to get his over on 7.5 points, so if you want to tail this pick entry or make your own on NBA games when they come back after the All-Star break, and you live in one of these many states in orange on the screen here, then click the link in the description and sign up with promo code TUBFROG, and Underdog will match your first deposit of up to $100. So go have some fun on Underdog with a massive discount, and with that, let's get back to the recap. Watch your jet, bro. Watch your jet! I don't, I don't get it. How, how, do, how do they keep doing this? Patrick Mahomes was in the zone early on in this game, but so was Lamar Jackson, honestly. I mean, he made one of the best throws I've seen all season, but the biggest difference in this game to me was that Lamar just ended up shutting down over time, whereas Patrick Mahomes never even thought about slipping up for a second. But time and time again, I'll make this clear, okay? The Kansas City Chiefs, this 2023 Super Bowl attendee and later victory Chiefs team is not good. Okay, this team is bad. We, the Raiders, we kicked the shit out of them. But whatever, back in this game, uh, the Chiefs were winning, but they left the window open. Like, like wide open with a f***ing slide going through it for the Ravens to just go right down if they so chose to. But nope, that would be too easy for them. And just when it looked like the Ravens were going to take full advantage, though, they finally made things happen with a massive Zay Flowers beautiful play, and he got a taunting penalty. Off is number four! It's fine, though. He made up for it on the next play. You know, nice catch and all that. And as long as, you know, maybe the, the same guy you just tried to bitch doesn't just strip you on the one-yard line, everything should be f***ing fine. Jackson to Flowers. He dives! The ball came out! It's recovered by Kansas City! God damn it, Zay. God damn it. Damn it. It just keeps happening. From there, the Chiefs defense bent and bent, but luckily, before they broke, Lamar Jackson did, with a rough interception in the end zone and <laughs> in triple coverage. I... Am I missing something here? Why, why did he throw this ball? And with the dust settled, my god, the Chiefs actually made the Super Bowl again. Opportunities don't matter if you can't convert on them, and the Ravens lost the game. I, I just... It, it doesn't add up how the Chiefs just keep getting it done. And I gotta say, though, there was just a ton of hate going on towards the Chiefs, and I understand it, but I think people are viewing this Chiefs team incorrectly. I made the same mistake with the NBA and LeBron back in the day, but when greatness is happening, you shouldn't hate watch. Just observe it and watch it and appreciate it with a smile on your face and observe the NFL's new overlords. So yeah, Taylor Swift's in the Super Bowl now. I'm just gonna take a sip of Gamma really quick and just think about what the fuck happened! I don't wanna do this. I don't I don't wanna revisit this game. I've already already done it like twice. Why do I well it is my job, so I will do what must be done. The game between the Lions and the 49ers started off with a Ben Johnson masterclass. I mean, the, the dude was dialing up perfect play call one after the other. And Brock Purdy was firing some elite arm punts too on the other side and some great throws too, but after a Jake Moody missed field goal, it looked like the Lions were a singular defensive stop and a touchdown away from just icing the game and making the Super Bowl. And that's damn near what happened, uh, sort of. Uh, Brock Purdy threw a pick and Jameer Gibbs found himself in the end zone and it was all just going perfectly. The, the Lions even denied the 49ers from getting the ball one more time before halftime and when halftime came, the 49ers stadium, the 49ers stadium was erupting with Jared Goff chants. I mean, can you think of a more beautiful scene than that? However, the Detroit Lions, at their heart, at their core, in their soul, are still the Detroit Lions. And in the second half, in came, for my money, the single greatest one-quarter collapse I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I know I downplayed it a little in the Lions video if you saw it, but that was because the, the wound was still healing at the time. But if you don't remember, let me, let me bring back all that f***ing misery that happened in this game, okay? First... Josh Reynolds drops a fourth down near game ceiling pass. Then Jameer Gibbs fumbles, which leads to a 49ers touchdown. <laughs> Sam Laporta 
then arguably drops a ball. Josh Reynolds then drops a ball. Again, they then fuck up a routine kick from being on the one-yard line, which would have been enormous. Then, the Lions whiff an easy sack, and just to pause for a second here, this... <laughs> This is literally all happening, like, back to back to back, okay? All of this. And then we got a little break with Jamison Williams barely catching the ball, and then Dan Campbell decides to roll the dice again, which I actually disagreed with completely this time. I think the first one was pretty warranted, but this was, this was too much. And the Lions failed to convert, and one Elijah Mitchell touchdown later, and that was the game. And the season for the Detroit Lions was over. Congratulations to any Lions fans who slept that night, and with that, the San Francisco 49ers moved on to the Super Bowl to rematch the Kansas City Chiefs, a game in which they were, of course, going to be favored in, making them the only team in the last half a decade to be favored in every single game they played in during the season. So now, it was time. Could Kyle Shanahan overcome his demons and take down, by far, the worst Chiefs team that Patrick Mahomes has ever been a part of? And... You know, all should go well as long as he doesn't hold the double-digit lead in the Super Bowl. God, that would be... Th that would just be horrible. Yes. Yes. Yes! And so, the Super Bowl began. And uh, let me make this clear. Uh, once again, if you think the Chiefs are a better team on paper than the 49ers, uh, you're just wrong. <laughs> but the power of Kyle Shanahan in the Super Bowl is just... It's too overwhelming. Early on, it looked like a blowout would probably happen. Christian McCaffrey did fumble, but... I mean, he's the best offensive player on the planet, and he was averaging around 8 yards per carry, so as long as they kept giving him the ball instead of letting Brock Purdy test his skills versus Trent McDuffie and Legereus Sneed, I don't see how this game could go wrong for them. So, while the Chiefs continue to show why having at least some wide receiver talent outside of Rasheed Rice is important, the 49ers somehow didn't build like a 24-0 lead. It was just, it was incredible. Yes, the Chiefs defense was playing very well, but when you basically have five possessions in the first half with the Chiefs matching your lost fumble, not even counting the ones that they got back, they must have went into halftime absolutely fuming that the game was only 10-3, to because I felt like it should have just been a complete blowout. And meanwhile, for Kansas City, with Rasheed Rice getting Charvarius warded most of the time, Travis Kelsey is also old, and Isaiah Pacheco decided that now would just be the perfect time for his worst game of the season, the Chiefs' offense suffered as a result, and was just basically, all right, uh, Patrick Mahomes, you're pretty good, so uh, do it all yourself. And just for a little extra fuck you to make things harder, you're going to go against the 49ers' defensive line without Joe Thune, and Creed yeah. Humphrey is going to snap the ball closer to your f***ing taint than your chest every single time. So, <laughs> good luck with that. Now, after the underwhelming regular season matchup that was the first half of the Super Bowl, the 49ers came out with, with a masterful plan, and it revolved around... <laughs> you know Christian McCaffrey, right? Uh, this Hall of Fame running back that you have, and one of the most talented players in the entirety of NFL history? Let's not use him in the run game, okay? Th this is the plan, all right? This is gonna work. Let's give him two carries in the entire third quarter and let our sophomore quarterback test the waters versus the Chiefs secondary. I just... These decisions, man. These decisions from Kyle Shanahan just don't make any sense. And I, I think Tony Romo even said something like this on the broadcast, but if they went full Mike Shanahan and gave Christian McCaffrey a Terrell Davis workload of at least 30 carries, I, I don't see how they would have lost this game. And he even said that before the Super Bowl and then just lied. I just, I feel like Kyle Shanahan was also just a little bit too scared of the Chiefs offense when he didn't need to be. And later on, after the Chiefs scored because of a special teams issue, Shanahan started not being scared enough. And when the game script was completely negative towards the run game, he thought that then, then was the time to bring in the run game. But remember, the 49ers average 29 points per game and are a absolutely elite tier offense. And if you have all pros and Pro Bowl level guys at almost every position on offense outside of the O-line, you're going to score points, which they did, but... <laughs> they missed the extra point. Oh, I don't want to hear a goddamn word saying, oh, but it was tipped. No, no, no. This, this is a f***ing problem from coaching to blocking to kicking. This is unacceptable in the Super Bowl. But 
It happened. And thankfully for the Niners, because the Chiefs can't get a touchdown unless it involves a fumble in the red zone and a blown coverage, all they could muster was a field goal on their next drive, which, because of the missed PAT, was enough to bring the game to a dead draw. And then things really started to heat up. The 49ers limped into field goal range, and Jake Moody actually made his kicks, which meant that Patrick Mahomes would come back onto the field. A chance to add on to his already immense legacy, down by three, with a chance to win the Super Bowl. Somehow. I, I can't believe the Chiefs had a chance to even win the Super Bowl at one point during this game, but here we are, and even if that wasn't going to be a possibility, he could at least tie it with a field goal because touchdowns are just impossible for this Chiefs offense. But, my God, it, it was just a beautiful drive up until the very last couple of plays. Patrick Mahomes just... He doesn't make mistakes when it matters most. The scramble on second down was huge. The McKinnon check down was even bigger. And then Kelsey's reception down to around the 10 yard line actually made a win in regulation possible. And although people are already giving Mahomes a ton of shit for missing Rasheed Rice here, I mean, if you've been in a situation like this, Mahomes was never going to go to his second read with that time left on the clock. But it can be argued though that the old man Kelsey on prime Fred Warner was not the matchup you're looking for. And instead, it was time for overtime in the Super Bowl. One more quarter to decide the Super Bowl. <laughs> as, 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 long, as long as both coaches did their jobs and, you know, taught the players the rules, it, it should be a pretty even overtime where everyone knows what's going on. <laughs> Turns out... Kyle Shanahan may have failed a little bit. He uh, seemingly did not tell his team how overtime works, whereas the Chiefs studied it front and back, because, uh, of course, that's how Kyle Shanahan works. And also, remember, the 49ers were up 10-0 to at one point, and it also felt like way more than just 10. So, um, it was just imperative for Kyle Shanahan to come up with a brand new way to throw a football game on the biggest stage, and I gotta hand it to the guy. This... This is a creative way to go about it. I, really, well done. As, interestingly, the 49ers decided to receive the kickoff. I, I, keep in mind, the, the Chiefs literally have not scored a touchdown outside of the fumble inside the 49ers end zone. The Niners defense was doing a very good job. So instead of having a chance to win with a field goal if they stop Kansas City, which is definitely likely at this point in the game, they wanted the ball first, which could still have worked if they actually scored, but... No, Chris Jones, who was pretty dormant at times in this game, did what Hall of Fame talent level players do and made a game-changing play to force a field goal. And now, here we are again. Can Patrick Mahomes make history happen? And what do you know? Of course he did. Patrick Mahomes is an NFL legend. Fourth down and one. Super Bowl on the line. Mahomes does it himself. Third down and six. Super Bowl on the line, Mahomes finds his rookie wide receiver for a massive first down, and third down and one, when all they needed was just a singular yard again, all they have to do is the same thing. Just put the ball in Patrick Mahomes' hands, and he'll make it happen with a 20-yard scramble, really letting it all set in for the 49ers that... This was about to happen again. Despite having Justin Watson and Marquez Valdez-Scantling starting in the Super Bowl, despite losing arguably his best lineman, despite Pacheco and Creed Humphrey having uncharacteristically horrid games, and despite the slow start from Travis Kelsey, his Hall of Fame tight end, when the Chiefs needed it most, Kelsey's seven-yard push was the loading of the shotgun. And then, for, for some reason, the Chiefs didn't call a timeout, but... Whatever, it was all according to plan, because Andy Reid ran the Kadarius Tony Classic, and Miko f***ing Hardman scored the game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes is your Super Bowl MVP, the 49ers lose again, and it's official. The Kansas City Chiefs are 100%, without a doubt, an NFL dynasty. Whew, what, what a playoffs. Really just a weird one all around. I think the regular season was definitely a lot worse, and th there was a ton of entertainment. And also, um, don't worry, there will be a recap video for this entire season way down the line, maybe in a few months towards the summer, and <laughs> within the next month or two, a 49ers full pain documentary will be coming out. I really gotta, 
Got to take my time with that one. But anyways, if you like this video, then subscribe because I got a lot of videos on the channel just like this one. And if you did like this video, then watch this video I did a week ago on the lions and their pain and return to not as bad pain, but still pretty bad pain. It's it's pretty good, trust me. And also thanks to all my patrons for pledging a dollar. It means a lot. But anyways, <sighs> until next time.